Hi, I'm Dr. Sunanda Kane, and I'm a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. We're going to spend a few minutes just talking about a couple of articles that have come out recently in the medical literature in regards to medication adherence for patients with ulcerative colitis. So the first article that came out was actually for pediatric patients, and it was a study looking at whether parents could predict how much their their children were taking in terms of their medicine. And you'd think that for pediatric patients that parents would be very good at being able to tell because they're probably giving it to their children, but then there are adolescents who want to take their own medicine at their own pace and at their own time. So this study looked at whether there was correlation between what the parents were saying and what the kids were saying and also what electronic caps were saying. So these were kids that were sent home with medicine with an electronic cap on it that sent a signal to a computer every time it was opened and that generally reflects pill taking behavior. Now you can certainly open the cap and just toss away the medicine that's in it or just open the cap and not do anything with the medicine in it. But it was interesting what the investigators found was that the parents were pretty good at telling how much medicine their kids were taking if there was a fudge factor or a correction factor placed into that equation as well. So the bottom line from that study was that parents are pretty good but you have to actually have a fudge factor in order to really tell how much uh, medication a, a, a pediatric patient is actually taking. So why is that important? Well, we're not going to put electronic caps on all of our patients' medicines and that we really do want to know how much a, a, a child is taking and whether it's because of cost or inconvenience or whatever that children may not be able to tell us how much they're taking and it is really important to know. So that with parents telling us that if you put in this fudge factor that perhaps you're going to get uh, a little bit more accurate uh, assessment and closer to the truth. So just this month uh, in a different journal was a paper looking at adults and this was actually part of a clinical trial using ASACOL for ulcerative colitis and these were patients who were in remission and it, the trial was looking at once a day ASACOL versus three times a day ASACOL and a subset of those patients actually had those same electronic caps uh, on their bottles and it was interesting that, that the patients were asked, so self-report, pills were counted and there were patients who had these um, electronic caps. And it turns out that, that by self-report, patients said that they took about 90% of their medicine, where the, the caps showed that they were actually probably taking 86%, which isn't so great considering that they're actually in a trial. And so compliance should really be close to 100%. As it turns out that the, the electronic capsule reading was the most accurate and probably the most representative of how much a patient was actually taking, but that there was pretty good correlation, not excellent, but pretty good correlation to, to how much the patient was taking by self-report. What's interesting is that the patients who actually took most of their medicine actually did better, so that they were less likely to have active disease at the end of the one-year trial than those patients who didn't take as much medicine. So the bottom line from that trial was that even in a trial setting where medication is getting paid for, when patients are coming in on a regular basis, that they're still not taking anywhere close to 100% of their medicine, but that those who took more than others, that they had a better chance of staying in remission. And the other thing that was interesting was that over time, everybody started taking less medicine, and those who were taking it three times a day were much less likely to take as much medicine as those who were taking it once a day. So the authors at the end of the study concluded that one, that patients don't take as much as they need to, that two, when they do that, the consequence is that they are at higher risk for having a disease flare, and that clearly once a day dosing was preferable over multiple doses during the day, and that that will help keep patients more adherent or compliant to their therapy. So as a clinician, what this means to me is that I can't necessarily trust what 
patients are telling me in terms of how much they're taking. So I have to assume the worst and just remind my patients that let's make this easy for you and let's make sure that you're doing this on a pretty regular basis so that you stay in remission and think of your medicine at this point as a vitamin which is maintaining health as opposed to a medicine that you're going to need to gain health. So I think that these two papers most recently published help to bolster what we've already sort of shown previously but now have just added even more fuel to the fire to say that it's really important that we understand how much medicine patients are taking and the consequences when they don't.